Art cannot be manifest. Strength cannot ex be exerted. Wealth is useless and reason is powerless. That was written 1200 or 300 years before Christ. This isn't a new concept. Health is important. So when it comes to discovering how to experience health, happiness, and vitality, there are two fundamentally important questions that we must address. Why do we get sick, and how do we get and stay healthy? How does this, what does this have to do with chiropractic philosophy? It has to do with everything with chiropractic philosophy, because this is the question that D.D. and B.J. Palmer asked themselves, right? Why are people getting sick? And how do we get and keep people well? I'm going to answer those questions for you today. Why people get sick and how we get people well. We have to understand some concepts before we move forward. We have to understand what is health, what is wellness, what is sickness, what is homeostasis. What is health? I'll give you a definition that I've memorized over the years. This is the definition from Dorland's Medical Dictionary. This is the definition that the World Health Organization uses. It says, health is a condition of optimum physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Listen, a state of optimum. What's optimum mean? Best, right? Physically, my body, my body, mentally, my mind, socially, literally how I interact with other people determines my level of health, right? It doesn't say a state of feeling optimally, does it? It says a state of optimum physical, mental, and social well-being. And what does it mean, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity? What does that mean? It means I can't stand up in front of you and say, hey, I just had a great exam and I don't have any diseases, therefore I'm healthy. You can't be healthy by default, right? Because I could maybe not have a detectable disease yet, However, I can still not be optimum physically, mentally, and socially. Let's look at another definition of health. You know, your body's made up of 75 trillion cells. If all 75 trillion cells were working in balance and harmony, would you call that health? It would be, right? Would it be possible for you to be sick if you had 75 trillion cells that were all working perfectly together? No, it would be impossible. If you had 75 trillion cells that were all in balance, working properly, you couldn't be sick. Because by definition, if you were sick, some of them aren't working in balance and harmony. So that's what health is. What's wellness? You know, if you study wellness, wellness really comes from the baby boomers generation, and it really comes primarily from the hippie movement, right? <laughs> These were a bunch of people that just said, I'm not just going to go from the flow. I believe that life is more than just living a pain-free existence. I want to experience as much as I can physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually from life. So wellness is a, is a way of life. The reason we have to define the word wellness now is because you can attach wellness to anything and sell more of it, right? Like if I created a company that sold Wellness Preparation H, I would sell more than if I just gave you Preparation H. Now, I don't know what a suppository has to do with your overall health and well-being, but the reality is if I attach wellness to it, you'll buy more of it, right? So we have to define what these words are. Wellness is a lifestyle of experience as much as you can physically, spiritually, mentally from life. So sickness, by definition, is not having all your cells functioning at 100% all the time, right? So if 75 trillion cells and 10,000 of those cells aren't working properly, then you're not healthy. Now, the health visual analog cell scale. Here's what I'm saying. If a 10 out of 10, if a 10 out of 10 is having 75 trillion cells all working together harmoniously in balance, and a 0 out of 10 is, z is, is no cells functioning normally or in balance, right? We're all somewhere in between there, right? Our job as healthcare practitioners is to move people closer to 10. Does that make sense? But do you realize you could alleviate someone's symptoms without moving them closer to 10? Could I alleviate someone's symptoms without making them move closer to 10? Right? So you have a migraine headache, I give you a drug. Does that drug make any cell function better than before I gave it to you? But could it alleviate your symptoms? Does it move you closer to 10? No. So that's what we've been doing to America, right? We've literally been making people feel better, but doing nothing to make any of their cells function any better, so they perceive themselves as being better, but literally they're getting sicker and sicker and sicker to the point where one out of two of them gets cancer. Make sense? So we're going to come back to this visual analog scale so you understand a little bit more. 